What's up, Waymakers? It's me, Mommy Suna. Oh, poopy, yes. What's up, friends? Y'all ready for some more top fails? Let's go. I'm gonna go through all the submissions you guys have sent me on Instagram. Because quite honestly, you guys send me so much stuff and I just like save it. And then it goes to my save folder and I forget all about it. So we're just gonna go through it. I don't even know what's in here. So I just know that I only save stuff that I deem to be good to this folder. Before we get going here, please make sure that you're leaving a like on this video and if you can if you have the time please let this video play all the way through watch the video all the way through it really helps my channel out a lot it helps the algorithm pick this video up and send it out to more people thank you now I don't want to start with a super duper bummer so I think I'm gonna save that one till the end oh my god you guys have a really bad one to go through this one that I have picked out here is not that great either <laughs> still kind of a bummer but it's not as bad pretty sure this is an Amari hun and here's the video it's very short ba -ba. so we have a video here of a pharmacist or someone who works in a pharmacy who's like please stop asking us if we have Adderall we don't have Adderall no one has Adderall right now which is a big problem at this moment very 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 many people including myself have been put on wait lists a lot of us are waiting literally like up to like three to four weeks even longer to get the prescriptions we need for our ADHD. The struggle is absolutely real. So how does this woman respond? She sees a video like this and goes, you know what? This is the perfect opportunity for me to capitalize on the situation, on this medication shortage, on this shortage of medication that some people need to be functioning human beings. Hey guys, try my fucking saffron pixie sticks. First of all, ew, like saffron is, is a good spice, but like clinically proven to work as well as meds and no side effects. It gets worse because the caption she put here is these pixie sticks have kept my kiddo off ADHD. ADHD meds. Enough said. Excuse me. Excuse me. First of all, I've heard it said that if something has no side effects, that means that it does nothing. <laughs> Is saffron clinically proven to reduce ADHD symptoms? Hi, so I want you all to know that I did in fact Google it. <laughs> I just wanted to put what I found in this video here. So according to Philadelphia Integrative Psychiatry, there is a growing body of good evidence for the use of saffron in treating ADHD in both children and adults. Now it lists three studies here. I think most importantly, there's the first study that says it shows great promise it was double blind and saffron was compared head to head against methylphenidate which I believe is Ritalin. Now Ritalin and Adderall are two different medications. This woman is just like oh yeah it works better than meds. She doesn't say what med and the specific med mentioned in the video she's reacting to is Adderall not Ritalin. But anyway it also says amazingly saffron did as well as methylphenidate Ritalin with a tendency towards less side effects which she said no side effects so so there's that already. Then there's two more studies here that found that adding saffron to an existing Ritalin routine showed statistically better results than just being on the stimulant and placebo. So that is used in conjunction with, not in replacement of. But anyway, if we scroll down a little bit, it says, so does this mean saffron's as good as a medication for treating ADHD? And they say not necessarily. This was one study, and I think that talking about this initial study where it's competing head to head like replacing instead of using in conjunction with but anyway this was one study and it was done abroad in Iran where 90% of the world saffron originates from so it would be good to see it replicated so is there a conflict of interest here who funded this study when you go and actually look at the study which we can do right here you can see that there's a lot of physicians or professionals in the industry or whatever that are involved in this study however one thing I do want to point out is that it says 50 patients completed the trial. So their sample size was 50 people, which is relatively small for a study. And the conclusion on the study itself says, nevertheless, longer controlled studies with longer treatment periods are necessary for future studies. So like the study here in and of itself is like, we need to look into this more before we can definitively say anything. Also in regards to side effects, it says about 16% or one in six people had either insomnia or lower appetite. Huh? That's weird. Those sound like side effects to me. And she said, there's none. What? 
Anyway, I just wanted to add my findings in here. Sounds to me like there absolutely needs to be more research done. The thing about the scientific method is that you need to be able to replicate results to be able to say that it is definitively true, and nobody has done that. Maybe it's for lack of trying, maybe just no one has come around to doing it, and I think absolutely it should be looked into more. But if it was done in a country that benefits from the sale of saffron, if 90% of the world's saffron comes from Iran and suddenly Iran comes out with a study that says, oh yeah, it's great for ADHD. Put your thinking cap on for a second. We need to see this study done multiple times on bigger sample sizes in different countries who don't have any monetary gain coming from this by exporting their country's products. <laughs> but anyway, key takeaways are there was one study that suggested that saffron can be used instead of Ritalin. None of this had anything to do with Adderall, but also that study in and of itself says that it needs to have more research done. So it sounds to me like this is just another example of an MLM rep running her mouth trying to sell a product without actually having the facts to back it up. Just one study, which promising as it may be, has some things wrong with it. Anyway, yeah, okay, back to the video. But I mean, what she's doing here is literally saying, hey, your kid has been told by a doctor that they need medication. You don't need to do that. No, no, no. Just eat these fucking pixie sticks instead. This website doesn't say that they're clinically proven to work as well as Adderall. Dude, it's not, it's not. And if it is, Adderall is a stimulant. Did you put stimulants in this Amari product, dude? Like, stop. A 30 pack of these, so if you give them one every single day. If you're on an auto ship plan, you get it for 10% off at $45.95. If you're just purchasing it one time, $51.95. And here's the thing. Listen, stimulants are not for everybody. And in my ADHD journey, it has taken me a really long time to find what medications work for me. Like I've tried a few different stimulants before Adderall because of the Adderall shortage. Then the Adderall shortage has been going on for a while. So my doctor was like, let's try other things because like no one can get Adderall right now. But unfortunately I had some weird side effects with all those other ones I tried. One gave me like really bad headaches. Another one just like didn't feel like it was working. But hey, here's the other thing too. So my Adderall is isn't covered by insurance and because my insurance company says that it's because I'm not a child. So therefore, you know, adults can't have ADHD, right? <laughs> That's bullshit. It's stupid, but I maybe pay about 40 bucks a month, I think for my prescription for Adderall, which is without insurance is still cheaper than this Amari pixie stick shit. <laughs> Just absolute garbo. If you're buying these for your kid to keep them off of ADHD meds that apparently you're suggesting that your kid it does have ADHD, that they have been recommended that they need to be taking ADHD medication, and you're refusing to, you're going against whatever doctor told you he needs those medications, and you're replacing it with a fucking pixie stick, and obviously not every insurance is the same, but like, if you were on my insurance plan, and it was a, a kid, it sounds to me like they would probably have their medication covered by insurance, and you'd be paying much less, but no, go ahead and pay nearly, well, I mean, plus with all the shipping and handling and stuff, go ahead, pay Pay $50 a month for fucking pixie sticks that don't work. If it doesn't have any of the side effects that are supposed to come with treating a medical condition like that, I'd be definitely willing to say that it's probably not working. You're probably experiencing the placebo effect, which is a real and legitimate thing. Great job. It is just honestly disgusting. Like if your child is struggling and your kid's doctor is like, hey, we should probably try, even if it's not a stimulant, like they try, they had me try Wellbutrin first before I tried any stimulants. That made my anxiety way worse, so <laughs> did not work for me, but I know plenty of people that Wellbutrin has worked for, and it can be effective treating ADHD symptoms without being a stimulant. I'm sure there's plenty of other stuff out there that is considered an ADHD med that isn't a stimulant. There's a lot out there, you know, and if your kid needs help, like in my opinion, if your doctor is basically telling you like, hey, your kid is suffering. There are medications that can help. Like, let's try them out. And you look them in the eye and you say, no, I'm just gonna give them a fucking daily pixie stick instead. In my opinion, that's neglect. You do not know better than your doctor. You just don't. Unless you're a doctor yourself, then I don't know. Listen, I know that there are plenty of uh, professionals in the medical industry, in the scientific community or whatever. They don't always agree on everything. There's stuff we don't know. That's science for you. You can't just like get a result one time and then be like, oh, this must be true for everything then. No, 
it takes years and years of studying things a lot of the time to really get a grasp on how certain things work. But I think for the most part, doctors are just trying their best to help people. Don't they have to take an oath <laughs> that they agree to help people? Is that the Hippocratic Oath? Is that what that is? Like, don't they have to actually say that, like, my number one rule is to, like, always do best by the patient? I guess that's hard to enforce, especially in a capitalistic society in which our healthcare is part of the capitalist machine. It definitely creates it's a conflict of interest and it's not really enforceable it's just kind of a matter of like morality I guess at that point but I don't know I think for the most part like doctors know best no doctor is out here like trying to get every person in the world on ADHD meds like they're gonna do what's best for their patients in most cases especially a pediatrician I would think unless there's some kind of fucking monster anyway as far as I'm concerned if you are giving your kid an MLM product instead of the medication that doctors have recommended that you're child take to help them then you're not being a fit parent you're like using your kids as a guinea pig just to make a point just so you can like argue with people on the internet and be like see look my kid doesn't need like no one needs these medications yeah they do stop with this narrative that people don't need their medications they do some things can be helped by like diet and lifestyle changes some things cannot listen to your doctors don't listen to these crazy people on the internet oh my god including me Anyway, let's see, what's next? What's this one? Wow, thanks, I hate this a lot. Don't ruin this song. I love this song, dude. I know it's like really overplayed everywhere, but like, ma'am, please stop. So this is a recruiting pitch. She's gonna try to recruit us here. The caption says, I've been with Young Living for three years next month, and I love it so dang much. Clean and amazing products, clean and non-toxic friends, or she's saying her friends are also clean and non-toxic. She could be saying that too. In no inventory or minimum quota, DM and let's do this. Pretty sure you have to be on an auto ship order when you're with Young Living, like if you have a downline and you want to receive commissions from them. So it is a minimum of like, I want to say $50 a month, but I could be wrong. I mean, if you're just a customer and you have no intention of building a business with, I'm sorry, excuse me, a business with Young Living, there are plenty of other essential oil companies out there who import their essential oils from many of the same sources that Young Living does. And they are much, much cheaper because <gasps> shocking, it's not an MLM. Try maybe buying your oils with Revive. Hashtag not spons. I just like that company because they're like openly anti-MLM. Or Eden's Garden, Plant Therapy. There are a lot of really great ones out there that aren't MLMs. But you know, if you're not one of those people who actually like is looking at Young Living for the business and income opportunity, then this post is lying to you. It's a, it's a lie. She says there's no inventory. Well, I mean, I guess you don't have to hold inventory, but you are required to if you're building a team. If you want to get those bonuses you're owed, there is a minimum. So yeah, it sounds to me like you're finding these loopholes and just being sneaky about it. God forbid <laughs> that someone watches this and goes, you know what? I do want to join Young Living because of this video I just watched. Then they're going to get in and they're going to be like, yeah, but you said there's no minimums. Now you're telling me I have to have an auto ship order if I want to get my team building bonuses? Why do you want an upline who lied to you? Like you sat there and she lied straight to your face and you joined her team. How are you supposed to trust anything that she ever tells you ever again? Ew, here's someone in the comments that's like, honey, I've been for 35 years. They're great, but with the economy, it's hard to get a good business. But I keep on going. She's just in the comments of this post, like literally just being like, hey, anybody watching this video, maybe don't join Young Living because the economy sucks right now and you're not gonna get anywhere with it. Mmm, man, I hate it. It's, it's just so wrong. All right, what's next in this folder? What is this? Feel my body breaking and I cannot stop Don't breaking. ingest Stay essential alive. oils. Stay in alive. Eh, eh, eh. Says who? Stay in alive. Eh, eh, eh. The corrupt Stay aromatherapy alive. industry? I'm sorry. We'll come back to that. An influencer who has some kind of vendetta? <laughs> Oh my god. An article on Google to fear you. I'll be over here ingesting only the best with my doctor mom tools. Okay. All right. All right. All right. What? <laughs> what did I just watch? Wait, is that doTERRA? What, what company is this? I can't tell. No, it's Young Living. Okay. Oh my god. There's just so much. I'm sure I ended up covering up that copyrighted music with my own version of Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Yeah, she's got Staying Alive playing in the background of this video, which is an interesting song choice because she's literally suggesting 
realizing that these things are life-sustaining and she would die without them. Some thought went into that song choice. She knows exactly what she's doing. Secondly, it's interesting to me that she's like the corrupt aromatherapy industry. Uh, okay, what I feel like would have been more, I guess, factual is if she would have said like the corrupt big pharma or something like that, you know? That's what these people normally say, but are you now telling us that the aromatherapy industry is also corrupt? So who can anyone trust at this point? Like most of these people are running around being like, you can't trust big pharma, you gotta heal yourself with these essential oils, even though they don't fucking do all the things that they say that it does. So you can't trust what big pharma says and you can't trust what the aromatherapy industry says. So who are you trusting? My instinct my body my butt and she's like an influencer with some vendetta i'm assuming she's referring to anti-mlmers girl i don't have a vendetta isn't a vendetta like revenge a prolonged bitter quarrel with or campaign against someone oh you know what mm -hmm. Maybe I do have a vendetta. That's not the first definition. The first definition was a blood feud in which the family of a murdered person seeks vengeance on the murderer or the murderer's family. So it's like going to kill someone who killed someone you love. That's definitely not what's going on here. If we're using the term vendetta as just like, you're on a mission to spread awareness, then yep, I guess I am. That's precisely what I'm doing. No, let's see. Why do I and the rest of the anti-MLM world, why do we all say not to ingest essential oils? Because it's dangerous. I don't know. That was just one of the many reasons. There are a lot of essential oils that are toxic to humans and there's such concentrated substances that people have quite literally been harmed by. There's plenty of documentaries. There's plenty of stories you can look into. Oh yeah, I wanted to try essential oils because this crazy lady at my church told me that that's the right thing to do. Like don't trust big pharma. Just take these essential oils and pray to God a little bit. And that's all I have to do. And then I started breaking out into blisters and like like having hives 24 seven and they told me that was the detox. So I kept going with it and I kept getting sicker. Like that is a thing that happens. Not every essential oil is safe for consumption. Spreading this kind of false information about the safety of consuming essential oils, especially in the way she's doing it, she is putting drops of it, like multiple drops into a little veggie capsule and eating it. I mean, I don't know what essential oils those are. Maybe those ones are ones that are quote unquote safe for consumption, but then at the same time, like you can always come out and be like, it's the dose that makes the poison. And what you're doing here is basically chugging like half of a bottle of essential oils every single day. That can't be good for you. Like there's no way. Enough drops of essential oils to fill up a veggie capsule like that. That's a lot. She's licking them off her hand. Like ew, first of all, like gross. That amount of essential oils. And you're, if you're taking that daily, like that's disgusting. That's dangerous. Don't do that. Anyway, there's more to this. There's a whole last caption here that is getting my blood boiling even more than it already is. Let's read, shall we? I'm gonna be really honest. It's actual insanity, the amount of women that all of a sudden have decided that essential oils are their new victim to get some likes and stir the pot on social media. Wait, what? What does someone's gender have to do with what they're posting on the internet and what they're speaking out about? Like, there are plenty of men out here who are also like, please don't consume essential oils. But wh why are you targeting women with that sentence? Also, essential oils are their new victim? Okay, so like maybe from her perspective, she thinks that all oh, these poor essential oils are getting such a bad rap. They're just so misunderstood. She should have said like the opposite of victim, right? Like it's the one that we're all speaking out against. Like essential oils aren't the victim. They're the bad guy. No, I think it's because she sees them as victims. Cute. And one should ask why with a hefty side of critical thinking. The irony, I just died. I just died. I'm done. I'm done with planet earth. Goodbye. <laughs> the audacity for her to suggest that we're the ones who don't have critical thinking skills. Like what is there to critically think about? There's so much information out there. So many sources that say that you sh absolutely should not be consuming this, especially in the way that she is. Doctors, health professionals, like they don't have to think critically. They have like evidence or there's a lack of evidence to support whatever it is all these people are saying. So they're like, just don't consume this shit for that reason. 
reason because it's like it's not scientifically proven to do any of that and quite frankly i don't think any of us need critical thinking when it comes to this like leave it to the professionals it's not a matter of critical thinking it's a matter of stop trying to say that you're educated and shit that you know nothing about no offense ma'am but you i mean unless you're well studied in biology and like other scientific i don't know unless you're an expert in any of those fields you're just as ill-informed as the rest of us or uninformed or whatever the word is that i'm looking for Anyway, the local or influencer herbalist who condemns oils yet is pushing their herbal tinctures. Herbal tinctures are not a concentrated essence of a plant. Like, usually they're mixes of things. I guess it really depends on who's selling shit, but essential oils are known for their potency, and that's why you're not supposed to consume them. And also, like, herbal remedies and stuff probably aren't using plants that are well known to be poisonous to humans. There are plenty of essential oils that if you consume them, you are poisoning yourself. She's not giving any specific examples of who to look at here, but anyway. Okay, the essential oil is the most perfect and powerful part of the plant, chemistry-wise. Literal perfection, yet somehow it's bad? Well, also, it's really ironic that she's using uh, Young Living essential oils when there's really nothing perfect about them. We've seen more than one occasion of their oils being cut with synthetics, so you're literally trusting a company that has has cut what you are consuming, what you are putting in your body. They have cut it with synthetics to save money, cut the costs of producing their products and stuff. Like, you're trusting a company with some pretty big claims like that. Also, you know what else is found perfectly in nature? Cyanide. <laughs> Apple seeds, right? Don't those have cyanide in them? You can find the most pure and pristine sample of natural cyanide inside a fruit, and that doesn't mean you should still consume it. No, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Find it in nature. Hasn't been touched by human hands. It's just been touched by God. But oh, it's poisonous as fuck. This argument doesn't stand, ma'am. You can find a perfect example of plenty of toxic chemicals in nature. And they are perfectly pristine. It has nothing to do with anything. Anyway, people constantly say essential oils aren't safe to ingest. And yet they rarely question most things they put in their mouths that cause actual harm. Alcohol? Vaping? Aspartame and diet soda? Yeah, sure, okay, um, this is whataboutism, though. Just because those things aren't good for you doesn't make essential oils any better for you. <laughs> Let's go back to cyanide, for example. See, listing off things that aren't good for you don't make cyanide any better for you. And that's natural. Plenty of, like, diseases found in nature. I don't know. Would you say, like, rabies is natural? Can you have someone with a perfect textbook example of rabies? It's not good. Anyway, she says more shit. Red dye in most of candy and cereal. It's not every red dye, right? Seed oils in almost all processed food, including Chick-fil-A. Yeah, I can think of a lot of other reasons why you shouldn't be eating at Chick-fil-A also, but the fact that she used Chick-fil-A as an example in the first place just tells me where her mind is. Why would you use Chick-fil-A as an example? Like, everyone else out here is, like, shitting on McDonald's. Thought y'all love Chick-fil-A because of, like, Jesus and stuff. Listen, Chick-fil-A is delicious, but I have not had them in a few years because for a while there I was like, but it's so good! But no, I don't support that shit anymore. I won't give them my money. Who needs Chick-fil-A anymore? more dude every single fast food has their own version of the chick-fil-a crispy chicken sandwich like you can get that anywhere get over it there's dupes you know tylenol and other over-the-counter medications tylenol aka acetaminophen i know i want to say it was in the 80s there was a situation where someone like went to a bunch of pharmacies or stores that sold tylenol it was before they put the like safety quality seals and stuff on everything and they went and poisoned a bunch of people people were like taking tylenol and dying, which is really fucked up. But because of that situation, companies started putting seals and shit on their products so that people don't go to stores and murder people. There are probably people on this planet who can't take Tylenol, but I'm pretty sure Tylenol, out of all the, like, painkillers, if you're looking at, like, aspirin versus oh man, what in the world? Aspirin versus ibuprofen versus Tylenol and stuff, like, I think you would find that Tylenol is supposedly the safest. So safe, in fact, that they tell pregnant women that that is the painkiller 
killer of choice. So no, if you're using it responsibly, it's definitely, Tylenol is fine. Any doctor will tell you that unless you have like a specific condition that says you can't use Tylenol. Just like any other substance, you can take too much of it. Same goes for your fucking essential oils, ma'am. And you know what else it goes for? Water. Yeah, you can literally drink too much water and like drown yourself. That's a real thing that happens. Are we gonna start demonizing water too? Yeah, let's see. If you go and pop an entire giant pill bottle of Tylenol expecting nothing to happen, you're a goofball. You're being real goofy. Quit being goofy. There is such thing as too much of a good thing. So stop it. Get some help. Maybe she's like talking about side effects that some people get from Tylenol. Like what even would those be? Like stomach pains or something? I don't know. They're minimal for most people, dude. But you know what? I would guarantee that your essential oils have harmed a lot more people per capita, I guess, than Tylenol has. And so much more that is just accepted as safe or done with a shrug of the shoulders because it's on the shelf of a store or some herb in an apothecary. What in the world, ma'am? That's not why we trust it. We trust it because professionals and doctors and scientists and shit are much more educated than the rest of us. And if they say it's safe, I'm gonna trust them. Just in general, you know? If someone knows more about a certain topic than I do, I am likely to believe them over just trying to convince myself that I'm right, even though I don't know what I'm talking about. What you put in your mouth matters. And yes, I would say most essential oils actually cannot be ingested or even used at all because they aren't actually essential oils. Like 99.9% .9 of them are fake or poor quality that do nothing for health. Says who, ma'am? Where are you getting this information? Young Living? Oh, you mean the company that imports most of their essential oils from the same places that every other essential oil company does? No, they grow their own stuff. They don't grow nearly enough to satisfy the demand for their products. They import a lot. There is proof of this on the internet, on import websites. We have covered it before. Literally go look up Young Living's import history. I think the website or one of the many websites. The one I remember is called Import Yeti. You can literally just go search Young Living living and it'll tell you what imports they've had. And I can tell you right now, it's a lot of plants and a lot of even just like full on essential oils, dude. Also, ma'am, what proof do you have to say that Young Living's oils are more pure than anyone else's? It's funny because every other essential oil company releases their testing reports so you can see how pure their oils are. You know who doesn't do that? Young Living. You know who's been saying that they've been trying to work on that for like like 10 years, Young Living. Why is it so hard if every other essential oil company can do it? How come Young Living can't? My hypothesis is they're refusing to release testing results because they know that it will show that their products are no more or less, maybe less, I don't know. We know that they've been cut with synthetics in the past. Let's just say more. They're no more pure than everyone else's because they do import their shit from the same sources as everyone else, really. Yeah, they have their own farms, but there's so many different plants that go into their essential oils. They can't grow all of them. Don't they have like six farms? And then they have some partner farms and stuff that they don't own. What do you know, ma'am, that the rest of us don't? What knowledge or access to knowledge do you have that the rest of us do not? Because if you go and you like email Young Living and you're like, can I see your testing results, please? They're gonna go, no, that's proprietary information, sorry. And they're just gonna leave you hanging. For you to say that, 99.9% .9 of essential oils that aren't Young Living are not doing anything for your health. You know what? Actually, she's probably right about that. Maybe not the quality part, nothing about purity or nothing like that. But to say that they do 99% of oils do nothing for your health, you know what? Okay, I'll give you that one. But I would also include Young Living in that statistic as well. So I'll just continue to stand here, still alive, thriving, ingesting oils for years with no side effects and only benefits. Doubt that. Highly doubt that. Want clean, healthy blood? Ingest essential oils. Says who? No, I'm serious. Says who? Where are you getting this information from? Is there a specific essential oil you're supposed to ingest that cleans your blood? Isn't that like what part of your body filters your blood? Oh, your kidneys. If you have even one working kidney, your blood is being filtered and cleaned automatically. And if it's not, then you're probably on some sort of kidney dialysis. Want clean and healthy blood? Have kidneys. There you go. Want to have the right kind of proteins in your blood? Ingest essential oil. Where are you getting? Is there protein in essential oils? Like, what are you talking?
talking about? Want to rewire the brain of the cell? Ingest essential oils. Now that is just gibberish is what that is. Want to support the heart band-aid? The heart owie. The love owie. <laughs> what is that choice of emojis? Want to thrive? Ingest essential oils. Tell that to the people who have like been legitimately harmed by ingesting essential oils. Like, all right. And again, she's not saying any specific kind of essential oils. Like if you just go willy nilly ingesting every kind of essential oil, like, okay, so I have this one right here. Orange peel oil, I'm sure you could probably get away with eating that. Clove, I know is a thing that, that's a spice that people use. There's ginger in here. But there's spruce in here. I don't think you can eat spruce. Patchouli leaf oil? Is patchouli poisonous? Patchouli oil may be toxic if you drink it. Like you can use patchouli essential oils in other ways that don't require ingesting them, drinking them. But this is literally telling us that if you ingest patchouli, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Patchouli, patchouli, it may be toxic. So this is an essential oil I'm holding in my hand. It's by Revive. This may shock you, but they released their testing results and they're just as pure as they say they are, just as good as Young Living, probably better honestly. She just says ingest essential oil. She doesn't say what kind. So like if I start drinking this, this could be toxic to me. And then she says, but only the purest of the pure. Gross. So Young Living. You can ingest essential oils as long as it's Young Living. No, don't. There are plenty of Young Living essential oils that are going to be poisonous to you if you ingest them, period. We're almost done with this post here, but it says, they have helped our families in the toughest of health times and so-called labels slash, I think that's supposed to say autism. And we have now seen the other side and what it feels like to actually thrive. You can too. Be mindful of who and what is getting in your head and what exactly their motivations are. Say that to yourself too, dude. You're really gonna sit here and say that Young Living's motivation is not to just like drain you for all the money you have? Because that's it. Gary Young was a fucking con man. Gary Young was a scammer, a murderer. He started Young Living as a fucking grift, dude. And now look at this shit. He's got people eating out of the palm of his dead hand from beyond the grave. On her profile, says she's a doctor of quantum medicine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's pseudoscience bullshit. Naturopathic practitioner. <laughs> Facts are greater than emotions. Truth over fear. Like, what? Bitch, what? Um, her name on here is Jody. Autism, ADHD, asthma, and allergy healing. M-H-L-S-H-R-A. I don't know what those stand for, but none of those are doctors. There's not a D in any of those. But then she's like, I'm a doctor. This lady's dangerous. Whoa. If anyone wants to take the time to go out and report this lady, here's a screenshot of her Instagram, the Warrior Center. There's probably a lot of shit on here that should be reported and seen by the FTC and the FDA, honestly. Okay, here's one. But it takes you you got lucky. The luck. It's the way I'm feeling. I just can't deny. Big again. We're gonna have to read the caption on this because it's also very long. She's definitely using saint makeup. I can tell because that brush is definitely a saint brush. The gold double-ended thing, like I was sent one. This was when it was still mascara before they rebranded to saint, but yeah, no, they use the same brushes. They just, this says mascara on it. And now it's saint. Um, anyway, so what she's referring to here is how we always say that in order to be successful in an MLM, a lot of the times, the number one thing you need is luck, which has been proven statistically. A ARP did a study that basically said you have a higher chance of profiting from, was it poker or was it like the roulette? I think it was the roulette table at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. You have a higher chance of profiting off of that than in an MLM. And what do you need when you're going to a casino and playing a game of chance? Luck, baby. You were most likely recruited at the right time, in the right place at the right time. I would call that lucky. Now, obviously she's sitting here like doing her makeup. She doesn't show us like a finished product of her. It doesn't seem like she's like, oh, the luck is the makeup. Like the makeup is just so good. That's why I got successful. Okay, if it was literally just the makeup, then anyone who buys into it and sells it should also be just as successful as you because they're using the same shit as you. So it's not that. What I'm thinking is that she's like, no, look it, I'm doing my makeup on the internet. I'm working. Yeah, I think that's where she's going with it. So let's read some of this caption here. That second video popped up on my memories today from four years ago. 
I just had a C-section. Oh God, here we go with the trauma dumping. Someone loves Lisa Nichols and Eric Worre and all that shit. All right, just had a C-section after a traumatic labor. I had a 19 month old who was newly diagnosed with autism. What does any of this have to do with your stupid fucking makeup? Anyway, I moved my new family across country from AZ to NC and I still showed up on here to show off my favorite makeup. Oh, okay, so time freedom. So this is like you're showing off how much time freedom you don't have. You're like, despite the fact that I was moving, uh, my kid was just diagnosed with autism, I was healing from a C-section, I just had a new baby, but I still worked. Ooh, congratulations. Welcome to hustle culture, in which you feel the need to have to work despite the fact that everything else in your life is like, hey, take a fucking breather. You know what this is? The opposite of time freedom. This is not time freedom. When you are recovering from a major surgery like that, you need to rest and lay down and not sit with a camera on the floor doing your makeup. Just rest, let your body heal, and also maybe, just a thought, take care of that new baby you just had. I had every single excuse not to keep going. I would just be another network marketing fail story. She's like admitting that like, if you wanna be successful in network marketing, no excuses. Not even like legitimate ones. Not even ones that can affect your health. Like not even a fucking major surgery. Nope, you gotta work through that too. That's a lot of dedication and that's unnecessary dedication. Anyway, I own slash operate my very own personal training business and I also run my own makeup business. Okay, well the makeup business is not your own business. You're an independent contractor. Yes, the makeup business is an MLM. Does that word gross you out? Actually, that's an acronym for three words, but okay. If so, time to grow up. <laughs> Oh man, guys, we're all just a bunch of babies, little children here, huh? Social selling is just like your very own commercial. These makeup videos I do are my commercials. No, you are literally doing free advertising for a company that is not compensating you for advertising for them. You're being compensated when you sell shit, sure, I guess. But see, most like regular ass retail, normal fucking companies have an advertising budget and they pay to have commercials made and, and they pay to advertise and stuff. And we say this a lot, but a lot of the reason why so many businesses choose the MLM route is because they don't have to pay for advertising. You're doing it for them for free. It's not a commercial for you. It's a commercial for them and they're not paying you to do it. Great job. You've been taken advantage of. Great job. If you want it, I got you. If not, that's fine too because it's not for everyone. Yeah, Saint Makeup is horrible. I've tried it. Obviously, I have one of their brushes. It's bad. I've tried it twice. I have two videos trying it out. Like, there was a second time. I was like, I'll give it another chance. Maybe I I didn't do it right or whatever. It's like, no, it's still bad. It's bad. People are so quick to jump and say that being in network marketing is not a real business. Yeah, because it's not. You are an independent contractor. You don't own Saint. But having experienced both, okay, so you're admitting that there is a difference. All right. I can absolutely attest that it is a business. It does not work unless you do. It does not work unless you do it while you have a big gaping open wound from major surgery. I built my personal training business from the ground up. I'm a two man team, me and my husband, and I do all the legwork and behind the scenes stuff as well as showing up and advertising it. Being with a network marketing company takes the hassle out. All I need to do is show up and advertise it. Okay, but like when you're advertising for your own business, like that you own that business, I would argue that you showing up for your personal training business is more of an advertisement for yourself than being an independent contractor in an MLM because you don't own the rights to any of this shit. I mean, you own the rights to your own videos that you're making, but you don't own the product, you don't make decisions, you don't price the product, you don't fulfill shipping, you don't hire people, you don't do any of that. Did I get lucky? Hell no. There is no luck. There is only you get out what you put in. That's not true. Plenty of people put in so much work into their MLM and never make it anywhere. Oh, but that work wasn't real work. It wasn't good enough. Shut the fuck up. Who are you to say the quality of work that other people are putting into their independent contracting side hustle? Like, what the fuck? Just like everything in life. If you don't put in the work, it's not gonna work. Show up sloppy, show up scared, show up as an amateur. I was a stay at home mom. That was my life. I wasn't a makeup guru. You still aren't, bitch. No one knows knows who you are. You're an MLM distributor. I wasn't a makeup guru with all the tips and tricks. I couldn't even contour, but I've been able to create a new life for myself because of this opportunity. I have meaning, purpose, freedom, all because I didn't give up. See, that's another thing too. Yeah, you don't need to have formal training to join an MLM. So meanwhile, like I'm looking at like this first video here, she like put highlight all over her face. Like she is just a shiny disco ball of a face. And it's like, yep, no wonder. Like clearly no one has taught you like where makeup should go. And listen, there's no 
no rules to makeup. You can do whatever you want. But the point of Saint, their marketing is always like, it looks like your real skin. It's so natural looking and da da da. And it's like, you're glittery. <laughs> you put way too much highlight on, dude. If you had formal training or even like took a moment to just learn from other makeup artists, a way to make your makeup look natural, because that's probably what you're going for with Saint, you would know that like, you don't just like put highlight all over your face like that. But all right, yeah. I look back to my days in Lime Life and yeah, one of the girls that we used to idolize because she was at the top of the company, she would do like makeup tutorials with Lime Light's makeup and like none of it made sense. She would tell you to get like matte shadow wet before you put it on and it's like that makes it really chalky and pasty and like hard to blend and stuff. Like why are you telling people to do that? Weird little tips and tricks and it didn't look good. I'm not trying to sell this shit to you. Everything I put on my face, not trying to sell it. I do it because I like it. This lady is doing it because she's trying to sell it to you. I just don't get why you like would buy anything from someone who doesn't know how to use what it is they're selling. So before we watch this last one here, just I guess a trigger warning, we're gonna be talking about abortion, child loss, pregnancy loss, those kind of things. And to make it even worse, we're talking about those things and using those things to sell beauty counter. Yeah, to sell your MLM. It is disgusting. So basically the story behind this post that we're gonna watch here. So I found this woman's Instagram account because I follow a few pro-choice, abortion is healthcare, like those kind of accounts. And let me just say, you can't watch this and not agree with what I'm about to say, but abortion is healthcare. These pro-life people, they're not pro-life. They're pro-forcing women to give birth. So while there's a lot to learn from this woman's story, it is disgusting what she's doing with it. One of the accounts I was following made a post about late-term abortion and like how difficult it can be for expecting mothers to have to make <laughs> that decision. Hello, sir. You can sit up here with me. So this Instagram account was talking about late-term abortion. The post was t basically talking about the realities behind being an expecting mother who has to make the decision to terminate a pregnancy that is not going to last outside of the womb. The baby won't survive, I guess is the best way to put it. These are real situations. If you know my story about pregnancy loss and stuff like that, you know that I've been in kind of similar situations. Well, a similar situation to this. I've had two miscarriages, but one of them was at 16 weeks. I'll probably talk about that a little bit more once we get going here. It is a traumatic experience. By the time you get this far along in a pregnancy, this woman I believe was 27 weeks, so she was basically in her third trimester and had to make the decision to terminate. That was a wanted pregnancy. She made the decision because it was best for her, best for the unborn child, honestly, and the state she lived in and many states across this country have outlawed this kind of care. Please, you know, approach this with compassion. And if you ever hear people saying that abortion is healthcare, this is exactly the scenario we're talking about because most abortions or late term abortions, literally like 99% of them are wanted pregnancies that end because they discover some kind of health condition that couldn't be seen in earlier scans and earlier ultrasounds. A lot of these conditions are ones that you get far enough along and then you can really start seeing these things that are that are wrong. This is one thing that so many people don't understand. They're just like, well, why did you wait so long to get the abortion? You're already 27 weeks pregnant. And it's like, because you didn't know. A fetus has to develop a certain amount in order to even see it. <laughs> on an ultrasound, let alone be able to check out the anatomy. Just use compassion when you're hearing these, if you are a pro-lifer. First of all, I don't, I don't know how to help you if you watch shit like this and you're like, no, abortion should still be illegal. Like, go fuck yourself. Seriously, go fuck yourself. Maybe learn a little bit of empathy or something. I don't know. I can't help you. You're a piece of shit. I'm not sorry for saying that. Fuck you. But anyway, this account here was listed as like a reference to the other account that I was following regarding late-term abortion and stuff like that. So so they had like a list of accounts that are like, these are some like women who are telling their stories and da, da, da. So I went, this is the first one and this is what I see. She has a highlight that just says abortion and then a heart and a band-aid again. This is the second time we've seen that emoji combo, which I, gu I guess it makes more sense in this situation because it's like your heart maybe is broken and you're putting a band-aid on it. I don't know, like heart, this situation is heartbreaking. First slide of the abortion highlight here, it says, 
says, My abortion story, our son's birth defects, why I strongly support reproductive rights, that's great, and beauty counter, <laughs> that's not so great, cosmetic law advocacy, hashtag abortion, hashtag late term abortion, hashtag pro choice, hashtag fetal anomaly, hashtag fertility journey. All right, so buckle in. This is not fun. It's a really heartbreaking story and she is using it to sell beauty counter. It's honestly really fucked up, but it's sad at the same time. I used to have it on the blog and all the details of what I went through and why I'm such a fan. Um, but I realized that on my Instagram page, I don't really have anything that ties together my reproductive um, rights, activism and beauty counter and um, just like safer swaps in general. So I wanted to put something on there so that it's just saved in a highlight. So just to give a little background, um, my second pregnancy ended in an abortion at almost 27 weeks pregnant. So when I was 20 weeks pregnant, I went to the doctor and they, they didn't even find any significant issues. They just found an um, umbilical cord issue. When I was 22 weeks pregnant, we went to the doctor, a uh, level two ultrasound, and they found that there was probably um, a complete esophageal atresia. And even now it's like choking me up. And we had a large As it um, should. VSD. So I was 25 weeks pregnant the week of Christmas of 2018 when we found out that just the extent of our baby's um, fetal anomalies, all the genetic testing came back normal. And our genetic counselors and the specialist team at Cincinnati Children's told me that they thought it was probably from some combination of ingredients used in cosmetics that had caused our baby's um, fatal birth defects. So, so you're feeling real bad for her, right? She's talking about her story. It's heartbreaking. You wouldn't wish this on any other mother or parent for that matter. And then she drops the bomb. My doctor said it was because of the ingredients I use in cosmetics. No. And like anyone could sit here and be like, Savannah, you weren't in the room. You don't know. No, no, no. I have my assumptions of a lot of things, but here's what I do know because she hasn't said it yet, but there is a condition. Well, I don't know. Would you call it a condition? Let me look it up. It's a syndrome that she's about to tell us about because this is what her baby was, I guess, diagnosed with. It was a Vactryl baby. Every letter in Vactryl stands for a different kind of anomaly. Vertebrae, anal, cardiovascular, tracheoesophageal, esophageal, and then like regular esophageal, renal, and limb defects. So these are all things that like, unfortunately, they're kind of physical anomalies that the baby needs to be developed enough to be able to notice. I had never heard of this. I didn't know what this was. So I looked it up after watching this. And the second source that comes up comes from Cincinnati Children's Hospital. <gasps> Wait a minute. Isn't that exactly where she said that she went? So this is the hospital's website where she received care. And and here's what it says about Vactryl. Vactryl association causes. The cause of Vactryl association is not well understood. Vactryl association is a complex condition that may have different causes in different people. No specific genetic or chromosome problems have been identified with Vactryl association. Multiple genetic and environmental factors likely play a part in determining the risk of developing this condition and how severe the condition will be in an individual. Some possible genetic environmental influences are being studied. So it says no specific genetic or chromosome problem has been identified, but they're not leaving out the possibility that it could be genetic. I'll have to look it up here, but I'm pretty sure there are studies that I'll like look into like genealogy on this, but I mean, they haven't identified a specific mutation or something like that so far from what we know about this Vactryl situation. Oh, are you getting sleepy? Are you gonna take a nap? I'll finish up here in a second, bud. Oh, you are getting sleepy. Okay, well, let's finish this up. But then it also says multiple genetic and environmental. We'll get into that. Let's say multiple genetic factors likely play a part, but she was just like, oh no, it definitely couldn't have been that because all of the genetic testing came back normal. It's like, okay, again, whatever causes this has not been identified. Clearly here says it's not well understood. Science hasn't figured it out yet. Now in the future, they probably will. It does say environmental factors. Now when you look into this, if you if you look into like other sources on the internet that say like causes in association with um, like environmental factors, those are usually like obesity, diabetes, smoking, non-smoking. Nowhere, not in 
in a single source that I have found on the internet has it ever said it is because of the toxins and the chemicals found in beauty products. Because if that were the case, if the makeup that people wear on their faces on a daily basis for a lot of people, if that's what's causing it, there wouldn't be a normal birth on this goddamn planet. Every baby would have Bacteral. Not every, most would, unless you're a mother that doesn't wear makeup. But that's not the case. This is a pretty rare deformity. The Children's Hospital of Philadelphia here says that scientists suspect it's caused by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. <gasps> There's also some evidence that women who have diabetes may be more likely to have babies with Bacteral. Medline says... It's a complex condition that may have different causes in different people. In some people, the condition is likely caused by the interaction of multiple genetic and environmental factors. Some possible genetic and environmental influences have been identified and are being studied. Rarediseases.org, likely caused by a combination of different factors. The cause remains unknown in most patients. It's not well understood. Getting back to this woman's story, for her to suggest that a doctor told her, oh, this is probably caused by like stuff in your makeup. If that were true, that doctor should be fired. Aren't doctors usually like trained to not make absolute statements like that? Because like so much about health and medicine and science and stuff isn't as understood as we would like it to be. And you have things like this that are still being studied. We don't understand it because we haven't studied it enough. Huh. But also I, I just doubt it entirely. I doubt that that happened. Now what probably did happen was that she like hyper focused on that. Like she probably was asking well, what causes this kind of thing and the doctors probably said well we don't really know it could be genetic there could be environmental factors and she probably said what do you mean by environmental factors and he probably said oh I don't know if you're overweight which clearly this woman's not overweight if you're overweight or you have diabetes or you're a smoker or I don't know it could be just things in the environment surrounding the pregnant woman like we do know that there are things that pregnant women should not ingest the problem is we can't really study these things in general because it wouldn't be ethical no pregnant woman would submit herself to be subjected to something that might harm her baby so what uh, probably happened is the doctor was probably like I don't know you know it could be some chemical something found in cosmetics or cleaning supplies or blah 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 or whatever like it could be a number of things and she just hyper focused on my cosmetics like that's what I think happened in my opinion like that's what that's the only thing that makes sense because there is no way that a doctor looked her in the eye and said your baby will not survive outside of the womb because of the makeup you were using no fucking shot I believe that what I was saying before is that she hyper focused but I believe that she used that hyper focus to be like okay I can profit off of this and that's exactly what she did the other thing too regarding all this that confuses me is why be beauty counter because beauty counter literally only sells beauty stuff like makeup and skincare and stuff like that it sounds to me like if hypothetically Vactoral was caused by some sort of chemical somewhere wouldn't you want to clean up your entire life make safe swaps all over join a lifestyle MLM you know like join Mela Luca join Young Living and I'm not saying that those products are cleaner or better or whatever I'm just saying like if you were going to take this very unfortunate situation and try to profit off of it, why would you draw the line at the cosmetics counter, you know? Why would you be like, I'm gonna swap out all my cosmetic stuff, but like, I guess all the chemicals I use to clean my house is fine. And I'm not saying they're not, but this woman clearly believes that chemicals caused her baby to be sick. I understand what it feels like to want to have answers because like when I had my 16 week miscarriage, it was a missed miscarriage. So I, I didn't know that I was miscarrying until I went to my 16 week appointment and they couldn't find the heartbeat. And then and they sent me to an ultrasound to confirm and the baby had in fact passed away already and I never got an answer for it even like because I, I ended up having to get a DNC which is a surgical procedure where they go in and basically like scoop out all the insides and clean it all up in there so um that's what I had and she did it through ultrasound I remember my doctor being like I didn't see anything like again well the baby had passed away at about 15 weeks we only found it at 16 weeks so it had been in there just like passed away for a week. I mean, a 15 week baby is big enough to see some stuff, but like there's probably things that weren't developing right. We don't know though. And I understand the frustration. I understand wanting to find a reason for you losing your baby. I get it, dude. It fucking sucks. It is the worst. It's almost like you feel guilty because 
it's like, well, was it something I did? And this woman is sitting here like profiting off of that. Not only is she just like dwelling in like, oh, well, clearly like this was my fault because like I was using these cosmetics. So not only is she blaming herself for something that probably was not her fault, she's also passing this story along to people who are capable of giving birth and being like, hey, like this could happen to you if you don't switch to beauty counter basically, which is really fucked up. You're basically saying like, hey, don't be like me. Don't go through this tragedy like I did. Switch to beauty counter now. So when you decide to have a baby or another baby, you decide to reproduce again, you won't have to go through this because if you do, you're gonna never forgive yourself. <laughs> Profiting off of fear. You are creating an environment in which you are making other people around you scared for what could happen to them. They don't want to end up like you, so they're gonna throw money at you to make sure that doesn't happen to them. And that is so fucked up. There's more to this. I, oh my god. It just drives me fucking nuts. The other thing too is there's a logical fallacy called the god of the gaps. And when we're talking about these situations where something happens you and you don't have a reason for it. There's no obvious cause to whatever happened. Not to get religious, I'm not gonna like get into that kind of stuff, I'm just trying to explain the logical fallacy here, but it basically is like, so for example, if you go like way back in time, civilizations didn't know all of the things that we know now. Early on, you know, people praised the sun, they thought the sun was God, or they thought that the sun was like physically being risen and set by a God, because they didn't know what was beyond them, you know? They didn't know what was out in outer space. They didn't know that the Earth was circling around the sun and the sun was stationary. So originally, they're looking for like, why does the sun do that? Well, we can't really explain it, so it must be a higher power. It must be God. But then later on down the line, many, many millennia down the line, we discover with a telescope that, oh, actually everything is rotating around the sun. It's not God who's doing that physically. It's, you know, so they find an actual, reason. And then suddenly that reason is not God anymore. The reason is, well, we're part of a solar system and everything rotates and there's gravitational pulls and da, 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 da. And then you move on to the next thing. It's like, so, so there are things that are unexplained that possibly could be explained that we just, you know, like right now, Vactoral, we don't know what causes it, but she is in a spot where she's probably feeling really guilty, which I understand, and just wanting an answer. And she's just kind of buckling down on whatever she can find. So instead of being like, oh, it's, it's just God who did that. She's like, oh no, it, it's definitely the cosmetics. And it's like, but you don't know that. You do not know that. You are just coming up with an assumption based on the very little evidence of anything that you have. I mean, this whole thing is just built around a logical fallacy and people are probably buying into it. I just think this whole thing is so messed up and it's like, I would never wish this situation on my worst enemy. She obviously has it worse than I did in my situation because like, I didn't have a choice to like pull the plug on my baby. My baby had already passed away. In her situation, the baby is still alive and she had to make that choice and that is fucking heartbreaking and I can't even imagine how painful it must be to make that choice. So I feel for her, I empathize for her in this way, and I honestly feel like there is some kind of innocence to this where, like, maybe her intentions started off good, but I really, at this point, like, all signs are pointing to she saw a way to make money from this situation, and that's why she joined Beauty Counter. But again, I don't know why she didn't join, like, a full-on lifestyle brand, because then, like, that's a lot more products that you can swap out and make a lot more money for. That's why I just, I don't understand. Anyway, let's keep watching. Sorry, there's more. In the state of Ohio, Abortion is illegal. They couldn't even talk to me about it. They couldn't recommend it. They couldn't do anything about it. Um, our child had Vactoral, probably one of the more like severe forms of Vactoral. So every acronym stands for a fetal anomaly, a birth defect. And ours had like the worst case of all of them. Six out of seven were confirmed. The seventh was um, the L, which was limbs, like limb anomalies. And you couldn't tell that until, you know, the, if the child would have been, you know, if he would have been born, but he couldn't live on his own ever. I mean, he would have died. It was just a matter of time of if he could actually like survive birth. And if so, like some period of time, how long he would have survived and gone through all the surgeries before he passed. So Heartbreaking. we um, made the decision to travel for an abortion. Like I said, I was almost 27 weeks pregnant. And that was merely due to the fact that they didn't find any of the issues until I was so far along. So that's why I am very into reproductive health care and rights and being able to make informed decisions and getting 
um, professional healthcare opinions because I wasn't even allowed to really get opinions. Now I got everyone's opinion after we did what we did, but it just was a really difficult situation as you can imagine. I'm really happy that she has gone through this and is now, well, I'm not happy she went through it, but I'm glad that she's using this experience to talk about reproductive rights and spread the word. You know, I'm glad she decided to be an activist for all this stuff because the world does need more voices speaking out because it is so fucked up what she went through, especially like finding all that out and then being told sorry we can't do anything for you because it's illegal and for her to have to travel across state lines with a dying baby growing inside of her like that is fucked up on so many levels i wouldn't wish it on anybody that's why the whole pro-life thing aka forced birth the state of ohio would have had her give birth to that baby that would not have survived and if it did on the off chance that it did the very short stint of its life would be spent mostly on a surgical table that's no life that's not humane the humane thing to do in this situation was to not even try to put the baby through birth. She's like, it probably wouldn't have even survived birth. What's humane about that? There's nothing humane about that. So yeah, and I think this is a really important story for people to hear because like, and I think she's gonna get into it in a second, but she's just kind of like, oh yeah, I never would have thought that this kind of thing would happen to me and I changed my viewpoints and that's great. It fucking sucks that anyone would have to go through something this traumatic in order to be like, oh, maybe like my views on things were wrong because now it affects me. Have a little bit of empathy and you wouldn't find yourself in that situation but anyway let's keep watching and i firmly believe and everyone deserves a choice to make you know do what's right for their body their family um and with the information and knowledge that's available so that's the reproductive side of it now like i mentioned because of the ingredient side of it um our genetic issues were a fluke i know a bunch of women now that have gone through exactly the same thing i know some women that have had crazy fertility stories where their lives have totally changed once they cleaned up the products they were using and removed some of like to these like, you know, call it toxic, but these chemicals that are known to create infertility problems, cancer. Um, I know a couple women who have actually like passed away from breast cancer in their mid thirties. Like it's just not normal and it's not okay. Isn't cancer or like breast cancer, especially, isn't that based on a lot of genetic factors also? Like she's not making any sense. Sure, I guess you could probably get breast cancer or any other kind of cancer from like environmental factors and stuff, but a lot of it is genetic. Like some cancers run in families and sure there are external factors factors that can cause cancer like I don't know radiation and shit but like she's literally like oh well it's just all the chemicals that cause the cancer and it's like that's not scientifically sound what you're saying I mean in some cases yes but in other cases no and then again I'm like why did you join beauty counter instead of it doesn't Melaleuca sell like makeup and stuff too like or Arbonne like Arbonne has something for everything like they have makeup and that's like a lifestyle brand like I feel like if you're really actually committed to to making safe swaps and getting rid of chemicals, like you wouldn't have picked Beauty Counter. You would have picked another company that has a much more expansive product selection. It makes no sense to me. That's why I'm like, it sounds to me like you were just like approached with Beauty Counter and you were like, yes, automatically yes. <laughs> That's why I joined Beauty Counter to start advocating, advocate for safer laws. And I wanted to start advocating for um, these changes so that, you know, pray to God another, at some point in the future, another woman's never going to have to go through what I went through because of some stupid cosmetic product that I paid a lot of money for that I didn't even realize was causing a problem. Or Dude, it's not, that's not a thing. That is not a thing. She's fear mongering hardcore right now. And it's honestly really fucked up. I would have never used it. And I had no, you know, no one told me not to use those type of products until after um, we had our situation. And then that was the first question that my OB asked me after we lost the baby was what type of products um, had I been using? And that will like haunt me probably for the rest of my life. Are you going to a naturopathic doctor? Like, what are you doing? Why would that be the first thing that any doctor says to you? Was your doctor also in beauty counter or is your doctor like there, there had to be some kind of ulterior motive, I guess, with whatever that doctor was. We saw the website, like that's probably their training material there or written by the doctors that are there. Her story's not adding up. Either that or they're just like trying to gather information. I don't know, like doctors want to continue to learn too and maybe if they have multiple patients who go through the same thing and they ask them all the same questions and they all use the same thing, well then like you can kind of hypothesize what's going on here. So maybe they're just trying to get information out of you to try to draw some links to other people in their situations also. It's maybe she didn't have any like actual intention asking you that question other than to just gather information. You're 
you're really buckling down on the like, oh, it's my fault for all the products I was using thing. And that's like not healthy. Also, that's not healthy to do for your mental health. Like that's awful. So that's why I joined Beauty Counters to help share and advocate. And because I also love the products because they perform so well. And then that also um, kind of flows into the safer swaps. So, you know, I'm making like small household changes. I look for stuff that's not crazy expensive or like ridiculous to implement. Okay, this is another thing too, is that beauty counter is crazy expensive. I think I was looking it up. We can look again, but their foundations are like 60 bucks or something. Statement maker, satin lipstick, $35 for a lipstick. And it's not even like a long lasting liquid lipstick. You want a lip gloss, $32. You don't talk about what's crazy expensive expensive here like that's way more than like most of the higher end stuff you but like if you go to Sephora or something even like I mean I guess you wouldn't call it like high-end makeup would you because it's not like it's Dior or something but like I don't, I don't know like Too Faced, Tarte like that kind of stuff like their prices aren't even this high a tinted moisturizer for $50 it's not even foundation their foundation is $52 concealer $34 a beauty blender for $22 so tell me again about how you're trying to implement stuff that's not crazy expensive because to me as a consumer of cosmetic products that is way more money than I would be willing to spend on anything and it's a you know work in progress and we still do all kinds of things that are normal and I call it normal but um you know I'd say like chemicals and stuff that we haven't swapped out yet but like as I use things up I if you made it this far, thank you. I think women sharing their stories is important. Yes, so do I. What I was taught about abortion was incorrect. I feel just awful for how I judged others without being willing to take the time to listen or understand their situations. Love that. That was a character flaw and you went through a situation that made you go, oh shit, I'm not being empathetic enough to other people and their struggles. I need to change that about myself. And it sounds like you, for the most part, did. Which, great job. You changed your point of view. It sucks that it took you having to lose a child to come to this conclusion, but at least you did come to the conclusion, and now you're advocating for something that you previously were very judgmental of, and I think this is something we can all learn. You don't need to go through a situation in order to care about other people who are going through those situations. It's called just being empathetic. It's called just being a decent fucking human being. People who are so judgmental about anyone who gets an abortion, for whatever reason, Reason, at whatever part of their pregnancy, no matter how far along they are or how early they are, if you're being judgmental about anyone going through such a difficult time, whether it's by choice or not, you're a dick, man. <laughs> You have no fucking room to be judgmental about this shit. So open your goddamn eyes a little bit and uh, just find the empathy that's hiding deep within yourself in there. Cause we all, it's in there. If you are a human being, it's in there. Maybe you have to look a little harder than other people, but don't wait until this shit happens to you to be like, oh wow, I was an asshole. Because right now, if you're being an asshole towards anyone for all these situations that they can't help, and then you're like voting for politicians who push whatever agenda it is that you're being judgmental mental of, you are literally ruining people's lives because you can't just like find the part in your brain that can like empathize with other people's struggles. So do yourself a favor. I know most of, the, most of the people in my audience aren't like that. You guys are all mostly very empathetic and kind people, but like to those of you who aren't and for some reason you watch my channel still, but you're like, I'm pro-life. First of all, how did you get here? But second of all, pull your head out of your ass. I'm telling you this because I literally care. Pull your head out of your ass and start thinking about other people besides yourself for once. I'm here to listen or if you have any questions please let me know. Abortion still only makes up about 1% of all pregnancies and only 1.5% of all abortions happen after 20 weeks. Uh, just re-fact checked. This is the data. Yeah, that sounds about right. I guarantee that most of those abortions that take place after 20 weeks, because 20 weeks is generally when you get the anatomy scan is what they call it, because the fetus is developed enough to really start kind of seeing stuff. So the anatomy scan, that's often like when you find out if you're having a boy or a girl. So like it can be exciting, but also like that's when things, if it's something is wrong, that's when you're gonna start seeing them. I would guarantee that most of the abortions that happen after that 20 week mark is because they went to have a routine ultrasound and found that the baby could not survive outside of the womb. Most of them, I guarantee, by the time you're 20 weeks pregnant, you're pretty committed. It's probably a pregnancy that you want. You had plenty of time to consider whether or not you wanted this baby or not. Most of these unfortunate situations are not by choice. These are babies that people wanted. 
So stop being a dick. And making, you know, hopefully safer decisions for our family. And that's what I am attempting to share on here. So if you listened this far, thank you. And that's just a little bit of the backstory. The rest of this highlight is pro-choice stuff, which is great. Love to see that. I'm sure you guys understand exactly why I'm upset about so much of this. It really comes down to me being pissed off that anyone would try to profit off of this kind of stuff. Try to fearmonger women into buying your shitty MLM products. It's a lot and it pisses me off. So I'm glad this woman is out here advocating for reproductive rights. That's great. We love that but she's also making money off of scared people at the same time. Pretty fucked up. Anyway, uh, I guess that's, that's the end here. Sorry to end on a bummer, but I didn't want to put that first in the video because, like, I just felt like that was too much of a bummer. But to end on a happy note, let's thank my patrons and my members, guys. The list of names I'm about to read off are my financial supporters. They get access to things like our private Discord server. We have a postcard club, early access to videos sometimes. They'll get early access to this video and sometimes even more than that. So if any of that sounds good to you, you can go to patreon.com slash Savannah Marie or you can click the join button beneath this video to join my memberships. If you join on YouTube, you get a little Pop-Tart face next to your name when you comment. You don't get that if you join on Patreon. However, if you are planning on joining a postcard tier, I would request that you join me on Patreon because it makes it a lot easier for me to fulfill all those postcards. If you don't, it's fine. Just like send me an email or a DM and let me know what your address is or something after you join because like otherwise I have to come drag you down and stuff. But anyway, whatever. Whatever works for you is fine by me. We'll we'll work it out. <laughs> and without the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to Hula Chowdown, Janelle Pratt, Jacqueline Nutton, Amanda Shannon, Elizabeth Wyatt, Kisesi Drew, Nitty Dragon, Leanne, Sheila Tapia, Amy Dolanak, Caroline Reed, Charlotte Treese, Daniel Urena, Maddie Darley, Ray, Shayna, Tuesday the 13th, Turd Ferguson, My Camouflaged Life, Ari, Martin Hubert, Amy Louise, Mitchie 80, Mira S.I.K., LaSalle Story, Laura Jensen, Mother Dragon 82, Han Bjornsson, Baby Pink Pearl, Fallon Lowry, Hannah, Miss Blue, Carrie K., Love to be Evil, The Best Elephant, Jessica Bilhart, Jess Kronfeld, Emion, and Auntie Lou. And to the rest of my financial supporters, thank you so much for being here and for being you. Even if you're not a financial supporter, thanks for making it to the end of this video because YouTube loves watch time. It really helps my channel out that you're just here. Keep making waves, babes, and I'll smell you all later. Mommy Tsunami, out.